This video is the second video in a MongoDB authentication series. We've already looked at how we can sign users up and add them into our database. Now we're going to look at how we can log users in and to elevate their access privileges within our website with the use of web tokens. I've left a link to the source code in the description down below. There you will find two folders before and after. The source code at the start of this video will be in the before folder and the after folder will contain all of the source code at the end of this video. So please feel free to join in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Please leave a comment on the video to let me know how you get along and if you have any feedback. In this video, we're going to learn about web tokens, what they are, why we use them, and how we can create them for our application built with Angular and MongoDB. If I briefly revisit our progress, we have created two components to enable users to sign up and log into the application. These are forms with a username and password. Our application currently allows users to sign up with a unique username and a password that we hash within the Express middleware and store with MongoDB. This video will handle the logging in phase where users will enter their username and password to our login form. We will later realize the benefits of authentication as we assign unique privileges for the users in their online session. For this application, we will only allow logged in users to add diary entries to our database. And for that access, we will focus on how we can tell the browser that the user is logged in. We achieve exactly this through the use of web tokens. Simply put, the web token is a special string that our backend server will create and pass to the browser when a user logs in. The token will be attached to the current session the user has in the browser. Then when they interact with the application, we can reference the token where required to validate their requests to enable or disable access to specific pages or actions. The first phase of logging in will involve comparing the username and the generated hash of the password from the login form with the details that we've stored in the database. When our user hits the login button, we will want to send a request to an Express endpoint to validate these credentials. I'll begin by defining a new post endpoint with Express as forward slash login. The first objective is to verify that the username entered within the form exists within our database. We can do this by calling the find one method on the user model. The find one method will search MongoDB for a particular record and for our purpose we will pass in the parameters where the key is username followed by a colon and the value is the request body username from our form. This find one method will return the promise to us so we can hook a then clause to the search and begin to use the user object that is returned to us by the method. I will name the returned user object from our find one call as user within the then clause. And before we verify the password, I will add an if statement to check for the user to be present. If they're not, I can return a response with a 401 status. And then I'll be passing in a JSON message of user not found. So now that we know our user does exist, we can verify the user password. Now we cannot see the password itself, but we can compare the hash of the password passed into our form with the hash value stored in the database. This way, nobody can see the password in plain sight. We can use our bcrypt package that we have already installed into our project to perform the comparison. We will do this by using the compare method from the bcrypt package. So this will accept the request body password as the first argument and the hashed password from the database as the second argument. I'll simply pass in user.password for that. I will return this comparison from the user model.find1 method and then chain a new promise from this method below. So just to reiterate, the find one method will check 
for the condition to be true as we specify in the JSON body and we'll return the first object that matches the condition for the username that we find. This is useful for checking if the username matches any rows in the database. There is an alternative method called uh, .find. However, if we use that method, this will return an empty document to us in the event that the username is not found. So back to our password comparison. The promise will receive the result that will be true or false depending if the passwords match. So if our passwords do match, we can now proceed with creating our web tokens that we assign our user in their browser session. Just before we create and assign these tokens, we will want to check if the result is false. And for that sort of situation, that's where the password isn't going to be matching what we have in the database. So for this, we can return a similar response of 401 status. And then I will pass in a JSON message pointing out that the password is incorrect. I'm just also going to add a catch box uh, for all other errors that we might have with authentication and I'm going to put this at the bottom of our post request. So I'm just going to have a more generic JSON response here. So if we head back, if the user does exist, and the passwords match, we can now begin creating our token. So as I mentioned before, we're going to be using the JSON web token package. This is simply a complex string that will be used to enable access for the user across the application where the authorization is checked. You can find more details about it at jwt.io and I also encourage you to check out the documentation. It provides some really interesting and useful information when we're playing about with our web tokens. So we'll want to import the JSON web token package to help us create and validate our tokens. So we can install the package with npm install dash dash save JSON web token. And now thinking ahead, when we eventually create our JSON web tokens, we will need to pass in details about the logged in user for the JSON web tokens creation. At the moment, we don't actually have access to the user details within this block of the express endpoint. So I'm going to create a new variable in the endpoint. I'm just going to call this user found. I'm going to define it with the keyword of let. Then I will assign it once we have obtained the user within the then block from our find one request. So now that we have a user created, I'm just going to store the package for JSON web tokens in a constant called JWT. And then I'm going to define it as require and then JSON web token. Then down when we verify the username and password, I can create a new constant called token. I'll create this with the JWT package and using the sign method. The sign method will take a JSON body argument where I will pass in the username colon and then user found dot username and the user ID colon user found underscore ID. We're passing in the ID as a unique identifier for the user for future purposes. Then after the payload of the user and the ID, we need to pass a unique secret string as a second argument to the sign method. This string is used for creating the hashed token and it works as a private key that is used for creating a hash that is stored on the server. Finally, we will have a third argument that allows us to define many properties, including the expires in property. This will take a string of one H which will tell the token to expire in one hour's time. This way the user can log in for a one hour session before having to re-log in. Now that we've created our token, we need to return it to the browser where it can be used. I'll return a status code of 200 with a JSON response of token, colon, and then token. 
Now it can be used in the authentication service from our application. So in the authentication service, I'll create a new method for logging in. This new method is going to accept the username and password, both of type string. Then I will create an instance of the auth data that consists of the email and password as per the arguments of that method. Then I will submit a HTTP POST method to the login URL and I'm going to be passing in the auth data as an argument. If I now subscribe to the response and log it, we can see what happens if we log in. We will call the login method in the auth service from the login component when we submit the form. So passing in the form, email, and password as arguments. I'm just going to inject the auth service through the constructor of the login component. Then I will call this.authservice.loginuser, passing in the login form value, username, and login form value, password. Now we can test the login function. So if we test this with an email that doesn't exist, we will get an unauthorized exception. I'm just going to quickly create a new user with the username of new user and the password of test so that we can now test that we can retrieve a token. If we then authenticate with these exact same credentials, we can see in the console below, we have our web token printed. And just for completeness, I will try to log in for the new user with an incorrect password. And then down below, we can see the error message of password is incorrect returned to the console. So that concludes this video where we've now created a web token and made it accessible within our application when handling an authenticated user. In the next video, we will begin looking at how we can use this web token for making requests and also blocking requests in our application. So I'll see you in the next video.